Greetings, Inquisitors. Welcome back to Darth Loquitur's Mod Mastery series. This is the third holocron in the series. If you haven't watched the other two, go check those out. Especially number two, because it has some information that's relevant that we will build on today in the third holocron. We're going to talk first about building a great mod inventory and what that means. We're going to talk about mod statistics. I'm going to explain to you the four kinds of mods that we will find in the game as I see it. We'll talk about what we consider to be good stats versus less desirable stats, or let's say high potential stats versus lower potential stats. Using that information, then we're going to make a rule set for developing mods. We're going to talk through how you can use that rule set to develop mods in your account. And then at the end, we'll do a little workshop where we take some mods that are finished out and decide what we're going to do with them. Would we sell them? Would we keep them? Would we use them on a character or slice them? What would we do? So the first thing I want to talk about is the concept of mod inventory. I've worked with a lot of players so far who have a very linear way of thinking. They have a new character that they're working on. They're going to have Jedi Knight Revan in the account soon. And they say, I need to work on my Revan mods. And they start to farm mods and try specifically to get a mod set for a specific character that they're working on. So they have mods on characters. They have mods in the bank. Those mods go back and forth a little bit. There's mods for slicing. I've had some people say, whenever I'm working on a mod, if it's good enough, I slice it right then. I've had people say, well, when I'm working on a character, I'll slice up three or four different circles and find out which one is the best before I apply it to the character. Um, and I think this leads to a lot of inefficiency. I think the focus on moving mods in and out one character at a time, uh, for me at least, misses the point. So the way I think about it, every mod that I own is my mod inventory. Some of those mods are on characters, some are worth slicing, and among the mods that are worth slicing, some of those are going to be the ones that are applied on characters, and some of them are going to be the mods that are sitting in inventory waiting to be applied to a character in the future. So in this way, what it allows me to do, I don't think about creating mod sets one character at a time. I just build good mods. I just build an inventory of good mods. Then whenever I'm modding a character, I pick the best mods that I have from among what I've got. That really helps me prevent this idea and it happened to me when I first started the game, I would try to make mediocre mods turn out good. I would hit them a couple times with slicing, and I would hope that they would turn out. That's inefficient. You end up with a lot of mediocre mods that get even worse when you slice them, and we don't want to do that. You also have to be fine with the idea that sometimes you'll develop a character and you won't have the ideal mod set for them at the moment that you finish that character, you just put on the best mods you have at the moment, and then you come back and you remod them later as you get better and better mods for that specific character. But again, we're going to work on mods for the inventory. We're not going to typically target a specific character um, and, and just try to make a set for them. Mod statistics. We've already decided the speed is the critical stat. So how likely is it that we'll get speed and good speed on a mod. So there's 12 stats that are randomly assigned, 12 different stat lines that you could have on a mod. Each mod can have four substats. You can't duplicate stats on a mod. So if the main stat is health, you can't then duplicate health percent in the substats, for example. So speed has a little better than one-third chance of showing up on a mod. For the purposes of this holocron, we're just going to say it's about one out of three mods that will have the speed substat in the first place. Then each time you roll an increase on a mod that has speed, you have a random 25% chance that the stat that it hits will be speed. So each time you roll, it gets less and less likely that you're going to hit speed again and again and again. So if we make a statistical chart out of that, it looks something like this. 
So you have this 31.6% chance of a three-speed, a four-speed, or a five-speed on a mod. As the speed goes up, so this chart is kind of split in half. The left-hand side is the first 16 speed. The right-hand side is going up from there. So we can see that by the time we get to 17 speed, for a mod that starts with 4 speed, 1 out of 100 mods, 1%, can develop 17 speed. By the time we get up here to 22 speed, it's 1 in 1,000 mods, basically 0.1% will develop 22 speed. And again, this is in your initial rolls while they're still 5 dot and going up to gold. To get a 25 speed mod, it's about 2 in 10,000. And if we look all the way to the bottom, at the plus 29 speed, that is a percent. So that represents a 2 in 1 million mods chance to get 29 speed. Now these are 5 dot mods, so at the time that you take this up to a 6 dot mod, you would get plus 1 speed, and that would be, let's say, a perfect 30 speed mod. An initial roll of 5, and 4 rolls of plus 6. Exceedingly rare. So if you said, well, I just want to build a big inventory of mods with 25 or better speed, you're talking farming millions of mods to have that kind of inventory, okay? So it really is unlikely that you're going to get that many super high speed mods. Now, 7 dot slicing is potentially coming to the game, and if that's the case, then it becomes increasingly likely that we'll be able to see more of these mods because then we can focus specifically on certain mods that roll high speed and we'll have more chances to get high speed rolls on those mods. So the chances, you know, potentially can go up from there. But for now, where we're at today, uh, this gives you an idea of how hard it is to get good speed on a mod. If we just take a target and say we want a mod that's 15 speed or better, statistically it will take 40 mods that start with 4 speed to get one mod over 15 speed at 5 dot gold. And remember, only about 1 out of 3 mods will have 4 speed to start with. When you look at that chart, it assumes that you've made all 4 rolls. In order to get this statistic to work out, that means I've rolled all 4 substats and I've rolled all four possible upgrades up to gold. Okay? So with that in mind, there's five mod slots. We can take off the arrow slot because we're going to select a speed main stat for that, and we can't have speed main stat and also a speed substat. So we're going to eliminate that from the equation, and we're going to say, okay, to develop a, a mod set with five mods that have high speed, we're going to have to farm... 200 mods that have speed to start. So maybe we farm 600 mods, 200 of them have speed, and then we have to develop those mods to get the plus 15 speed. It doesn't sound too hard. However, because that chart represents everything as gold mods, if you actually did this method in practice, this is not the method that I want to use. I just want to teach you this so that you understand the statistics. All the mods that we farm aren't gold. So in order to reach their full potential and slice them up to gold to see if they turn out to 15 speed, we would farm mods, three refreshes a day. Let's say we got 35 mods a day that we could play around with. It would take us about six days to farm enough five dot mods. But statistically, it would take you another 32 days to farm all the slicing materials to slice all of those mods to gold. That would be a huge waste, massively inefficient, uh, to try to slice everything like that. So just be aware, the statistics look a certain way, 
but that's only if all the mods start out at gold and you can get all four of those rolls. In reality, what we need is a method to identify which one of those mods have the potential to do what we want. We're only going to invest in the high potential ones. We're going to sell off and skip the ones that don't have high potential. And that way we can choose the best use of our slicing materials. We're not going to try to get lucky. We're just going to use statistics and we're going to get good mods because statistically it's going to happen. It's not a matter of luck. It's a matter of having a good process, sticking to it, and working through it in the same way. The goal is to therefore be statistically successful, not lucky. The four types of mods that we're going to talk about. First type, not interesting. If I work on a mod, I develop it, I don't like the substats, main stat doesn't match, whatever it is, as soon as I decide that I'm not interested in that mod, sell it. Not going to invest anything more in it, get it out of the inventory. Some mods are okay for now. So let's say the mod rolled good substats, but it never rolled speed, or maybe it rolled speed, but then never hit a second time on speed. That's okay. You can still take those mods, put them at 15, put them on a character. It can help somebody. You're not going to slice those. You're not going to keep them forever. You're going to sell them off for something better later. But you can use them for now. Okay. Good mods are mods that develop good stats. They have speed and have the potential for slicing. Okay mods, I may take to 15 and put on a character, but I do not lock. Good mods that have the potential for slicing. I will lock those mods. The little lock symbol also gives you something to look for when you're looking for slicing. Um, to look for your high potential mods, you will know that your high potential mods are already locked and it gives you an easy way to look for those in your inventory. Then you have an ideal mod or a perfect mod and that's a mod with four good substats and multiple rolls in speed. Those don't come along very often. As we saw from the chart, the statistics are strongly against you for that to work out. To put it in terms of numbers, just to set the expectations for what you should expect in your mod farming, over 90% of the mods end up sold. Please remember, two-thirds of the mod, roughly, never hit speed. So mods that don't have speed, in general, we're going to sell. Now, there are cases... There are exceptions where maybe with the four stat lines they get, let's say we get a tenacity mod and it hits over and over and over again in tenacity. The other substats don't matter. We have a high tenacity mod with tenacity. So we say, okay, we'll keep that mod even though it doesn't have speed, but those situations are pretty rare. So in general, we're going to say if it doesn't hit speed, it's probably sold. About 6% of what le what's left is going to be okay for now. Not really going to want to slice it, but you can go ahead and use it. About 3% are going to be good and worth slicing. And in that ideal care category, if you go for four good stats and 15 speed or higher, or 24 speed or higher with whatever stats you have, the chances of that are about 1 in 2,500. So these don't come along very often, but when they do, they're special. Make sure you keep track of where they are and what character you put on them. Put them on because you'll want to work on them again in the future. So if we do a lot of mod refreshes daily, we test these mod routinely, sell off the 9 out of 10 that aren't going to work out, we lock the winners, and then we look to slice the ones with high potential. And again, this is an inventory management thing. We're not looking to slice the mods on Darth Vader. We're looking to slice the highest potential mods in our inventory. I'm going to address buying mods out of the shop briefly here. We're going to talk about it more in another holocron. But just suffice to say, there are mods in the shop. You can buy them. Just remember, they only have the same potential as any mod. If you purchase a mod with five speed and you hope that it comes out good, you will have spent a whole bunch of credits or shipbuilding materials, and you have the same percentage chance as any other mod that that's going to turn out good. So very early in the game, 
It's not a good use of your credits. It's kind of gambling, and you really don't want to do it. Once you start playing the game and you're not building up characters and trying to get 15, the level 15 mods all the time, you will start to build up a bank of credits. And once you're stable on credits and you have some in the bank, it's fine to purchase these high potential mods and try to use those to get some more good mods into your mod inventory. There comes a third step much later on. Once you get a lot of credits and you've built up almost all the characters that you intend to build up, there is really nothing else to do in the game with those credits except to buy mods. And when you reach that point, you will buy almost every five speed mod out of the store simply because it starts out with the potential to get good speed rolls. There's no other place to sink your money. So you might as well buy those five speed mods and invest in them and see if they work out. If they don't work out, all you've lost is credits. But when you have, uh, I've seen players before with 800 million credits in the bank. And I think what a colossal waste of resources. If you have 800 million credits in the bank, you should be buying every five speed mod that ever shows up in the shop and just seeing what happens to it. Because again, as a beginner, only some of those are going to work out. As an end game player, only some of them are going to work out. But now you're looking at it the other way around. If I buy a lot of them, some of them will work out. Okay, so there's kind of three phases in the game. At first, you want to avoid the mod shop. In the middle, you want to pick wisely when you have the funds in the bank to do it. And at the end game, you want to get all good mods with the potential to develop high speed. So we'll talk now about good stats. And any stat can be a good stat. Um, I've gotten quite a bit of feedback on prior videos about this. But what I'm looking for is the potential for this mod to make a character better and in general we're going to talk about relic level characters so let's talk briefly speed is the best stat we've already talked about that we've identified that having good speed substats is critical for a mod in terms of flat stats versus percent stats just to make sure everybody understands what that looks like i put this little graphic in here you can see that the 14 defense is just a number 14 that's a flat stat the number below it is 1.13%. That's a percent defense. So they're both defense, flat defense, percent defense. You can see the difference there. For characters gear 12 and below, there's definitely characters that benefit more from flat stats than they do from percent stats. However, I focus on mods that would be good for relic level characters. It's my belief that it's a game that's going to be played by relic level characters. That's how CG is building the game. The new content is all focused on relic level characters to, to defeat that content. So I want mods that are going to be effective on characters relic 5 and higher. Again, I'm building the inventory, and I want to build an inventory of the best mods for my best characters. Everybody else who's not my best characters can get whatever's left over. Okay, I'm not going to optimize flat stats. I'm going to look to optimize relic level percent stats. So that's why I consider flat stats less desirable. Flat stats for offense are okay. Adding offense is generally going to be useful. Again, if you think about the bonk math that I do sometimes, it's just about doing damage, taking damage. And always, even if it's a defensive character, if you're doing more damage, you're winning the battle more quickly, and there's some advantage to that. So we're always going to appreciate offense as a percent stat, and we're often going to appreciate offense even as a flat stat. It is possible to have different mods that work better for characters at lower level. If you want to develop some of those mods in your account, feel free to do so. My method won't do that, but uh, you can keep whatever mods you like. So this is advice. You can take it or use your own method. So the most important stats on the triangle and cross are the main stats. You have a huge variety of main stats that you can have on these mods. 
when you farm mods, you will always get more of the circle, the diamond, and the uh, square on the left-hand side than you will of the mods on the right-hand side. So you already start out with fewer of them, and they have more variety of main stats. So the main stat on those mods is very important. So the first thing you're going to try to do, you're going to try to match up the stat with the purpose of the mod. So defensive style mods would prefer defensive main stats. Offense mods would prefer attack stats. The three base sets that we talked about in the second holocron, speed, defense, and potency, can be used generically for damage dealing characters, tanks, any character in the game can make use of those mods in some way. And it's very flexible what stats are in the triangle and cross. If it's a defense cross with an offense main stat, you can still easily use that for a character that you want to be an offensive character. Maybe you put a speed set and a defense set and just have the main stat be offense. It's fine. They're the most flexible mods, I believe, in terms of matching up almost any main stat. And especially in the early game, that's going to give you the advantage that you can make use of almost any triangle and cross that you farm. That applies the same way to substats. We're trying to match the substats as well as we can, again, to the mod set. Defensive stats for defensive mods. Offensive stats for offensive mods. And flat stats are less desirable. Speed overrides everything. The rest of your substats don't matter if you hit a lot of speed. The speed substat overrides everything. So on a particular mod, we might be sorting out, we want offense, we want certain stats. But once we start rolling all kinds of speed, it's a mod that we'll use to make a character go fast and the rest of the stats become less and less relevant. Rules. We will rarely work on mods without speed. Any mod can be a speed mod. It's best when the stats on the mod match the set. We're going to sell any mod that has two bad stat lines. If we start developing a mod and it becomes lower and lower potential, we're just going to abandon it. We're not going to invest in low potential mods. We're going to lock mods that are worth slicing. We're going to use slicing material on mods with potential. We're going to expect 91% sold, 6% okay, 3% good, and less than 1% perfect. This page right here represents the basic rule set that anybody can use for developing their own mod inventory. When we look at the stat values, just to be clear, on offensive style mods like the offense set, potency set, speed, crit chance, crit damage. The highest potential stats for those mods are crit chance, speed, offense percent, and offense. Flat offense we will include in the high potential stats. Okay stats. Potency, for example, is useful on a lot of characters. It fits very well with an offensive mod set. It's okay. Uh, those characters can still benefit from a little bit of extra health protection or defense to make them a little more durable. Tenacity is a throwaway stat. It's not really going to help a character uh, that's trying to do offensive things to have tenacity. And then the flat protection, health, and defense are not desirable. They're low potential stats. For the defensive mod sets, health, defense, tenacity, speed, and I suppose you could throw potency mod set in here as well uh, because it could easily be a defensive set if you wanted it to. Speed is always a good stat. Health percent, defense percent, protection. And offense percent we will also put in high potential. In the OK category, we have potency, crit chance, and flat offense. And then even though these are defensive mods, we still put the flat stats in low potential along with tenacity. Now remember, a tenacity mod, tenacity is the best stat for a tenacity mod. But this is in general for all defensive mods. Okay? 
So just to talk about tenacity and potency, if you think about modding a character, if you're going to select a potency set, it means you want potency on the character. Any potency mod that you have that has a potency substat on it, you will always pick that one first over potency mods that don't have potency, okay? Especially with that mod set, you really need to look for potency. Now, with crosses, you can get a potency cross with a potency main stat. And I will say right now, keep those, even if the substats are garbage, for a character that you really want to boost the potency with the fewest possible mods, for example, put a speed set on them and put one potency mod set on them, you will want the cross with the potency main stat so that you can just get a big hit in potency. So keep a few of those, even if their substats aren't great, especially early on, it'll help you optimize what you want to do with the character. Tenacity is really the all or nothing mod set. We talked about that in the second holocron. And unless a, a tenacity mod develops tremendous speed and becomes a speed mod, we're pretty much going to say we're never going to keep a tenacity mod unless it has the tenacity substat. If we're going for tenacity, we're going for 170 tenacity. That means we need a tenacity mod with two, three, even four rolls in the tenacity substat. There's no reason to keep a tenacity mod that doesn't have a tenacity substat. Similarly, personally, I don't keep any tenacity cross unless it has a tenacity main stat. If I'm picking for tenacity, I'm going to want the tenacity set. I'm going to want the tenacity main stat. So I will only keep crosses that have the tenacity main stat. You can do something different for yourself. That's the way I choose to do it. Testing mods. So we talked a lot about the substats. This is a credit saving method where instead of going for all 12 rolls that you can go for, uh, we first go for the first six rolls because they're very affordable. It doesn't cost us much credits. Sometimes by putting that first six levels on, you can already tell that you're not going to be interested in the mod. And if that's the case, you can sell it off right away. If it still looks interesting, push it to nine. If it still looks interesting, push it to 12. If the stats look really good and you think you might slice it, lock the mod. I personally leave these mods at 12 until I'm ready to put it on a character or slice it. You don't have to do the same thing in your account. You can do whatever you like. But for me, it takes a lot of credits to go from 12 to 15. I'm not afraid to spend those credits. I'm just not going to spend them until the mod is actually on a character and in use. Then I'll take them from 12 to 15 and finish them off. Or again, if I decide to slice that particular mod, I'll take it up to 15 so that it can be sliced. Just a little credit saving tip. If a mod has speed, but the other stats are bad, we're going to keep pushing until we see the results that are available. So for example, on a blue mod, you can see two extra rolls at 12. You can see all the stats already at level 6. So if it has speed, it's really not expensive to keep testing. Let's say you develop a blue mod, you put 6 into it, it's got three bad substats, but it's got four speed. It doesn't cost you that many credits to go ahead and take it to nine speed. If it hits in speed, take it to 12. If it hits in speed again, it's already got three hits in speed. You don't really care about the rest of the substats. For a character that you just need to go fast, this is already a mod that's going to help you. Okay? So speed is going to override that. We're not going to look as closely at the other substats once we start developing good high speed. So this gives you kind of a conflicting management decision with regards to speed substats. So the idea is first, we're going to bail quickly on any mod that's developing low potential substats and doesn't have speed. We're going to get out of there, we're going to sell it. On the other hand, anything that does have speed 
we're going to push pretty hard to develop that speed as much as we can, and especially on colored mods, D or better, green and up, we can already see some of those stat boosts just for credits, so we're going to take them as far as we can to see if they're worth slicing. Here's an example, just some ideas to, to, of what mods look good and what don't. So a green mod with speed, it's a D mod if it has two rolls in speed. I'm typically going to save that and try to slice it. If it doesn't, that mod's going to need to have five speed and some incredible substats before I'm going to decide to go in there and slice it and see if I can improve it. For a blue mod, it needs to have three rolls in speed to be real interesting. If it only has two rolls in speed, the base roll and another additional one, then it, the other three stats need to be good. If it only has one roll in speed, we're not going to look for luck on a mediocre mod, right? We're going to Maybe we're going to keep it, maybe we're going to put it on a character, but we're not going to slice it. For purple, same kind of definitions as blue. If it has three rolls, we're going to try it again. If it has two rolls and good stats, we're okay to try it again. But if it only has one roll in speed and it's purple, I wouldn't even keep it. At this point, I would sell that mod and uh, look for a mod with better potential. Because again, if it only has one roll at purple, the best it can do at gold is to have two rolls in speed, and that's going to be an 8-speed, 10-speed, something like that on a mod. It's not that impressive. It's not that exciting for you to pick. So it goes without saying, but if you're very early in the game, you're a new player, you're watching this, you're at 500,000 galactic power, what you have to do for mods is much different than the end game. You have to be a lot less picky. You have to accept some mods that aren't that great because you need to get mods on your characters and you need to get that inventory built and get your characters going and started. Okay? Just be aware that it does cost a lot of credits to put them at 15. So don't just take every mod that you farm and put it at 15 to have something on the character. At least sort through what you've got, and pick the higher potential mods to go to 15. Now we're going to go through the workshop real quick. I'll put a mod up on the board. I'll give an opportunity for people to pause. Maybe somebody wants to pause the video, look at the mod, think about what they would do with it if it was their mod, and then I'll go into my analysis of what I would do with the mod. And maybe that'll kind of help people learn a little bit by doing how to apply these rules. So here's the first mod, and you should pause the video now if you want to think about it for yourself. It's an offense set with two good speed rolls. That 11 speed represents an initial 5 speed and a hit of 6 speed on the speed roll. It's very good. It has potency on it, has health percent, has flat offense. It's good enough for now. It's definitely good enough. We might slice this mod, we might not. I will say this mod has high potential the longer the game goes on. They're talking about introducing seven dot mods. That's not official yet, but I assume that that's coming at some point in the future. This is the kind of mod that actually has higher potential for a seven dot mod, for example, because even if you don't roll the speed going to gold you might roll it at six dots you have more opportunities to roll it at seven dots and for this particular mod if you get more potency if you get more offense if you get more health it's all good for a character that's trying to do damage there's a lot of damage dealing characters that want that potency want that flat offense and really don't mind that they have the health now remember, you can't have percent offense on a square because it already has percent offense as the main stat. So this is a, a good offensive mod. It might have potential, and especially if you got another hit on speed that was 5 or 6, this would have the potential to be one really fast mod with, with really good substats. So even though it's kind of good enough for now in the current situation, the more we can slice on a mod, the better this one starts to look 
because all the substats are useful in some way. Here's the next mod pause now if you want to look at it. This is a tenacity set with a crit damage main stat. I consider critical damage to be the premium main stat for triangles. We're looking for that main stat on almost any character that deals damage, so that's good main stat to have. It has okay substats. It's a tenacity mod with no tenacity. And remember, we said we're typically not going to be interested in tenacity mods that don't have tenacity. But this is no longer a tenacity mod. This is a speed mod. We might take a four mod speed set, but then just put this mod in with it. Whether or not we want the tenacity bonus, this mod can be used to add 13 speed to the character. And it has the crit damage main stat, which is very good. So we, we look away from the matching of the main stat with tenacity, and we just look at this mod as a mod that rolled good speed. So that's a little bit where the, the speed idea trumps the rest of the process. And remember, this is only a blue mod with 13 speed. We still have two slicing opportunities to try to get that speed higher. Here's the next mod. Take a look at this one. It's a speed set, a protection primary. Protection primary is a bit mediocre. Some characters want protection, but it's not as great of a stat as, say, offense or crit damage or maybe even health. It does have two undesirable substats with the flat defense and the flat health, but it has 22 speed. So again, it's a speed mod with 22 speed, and the rest of it just becomes academic. 22 speed is not the best of rolls. I think that's two fives and uh, actually, yeah, two fives and three fours, for example, would get you that. So it's not bad, but it's not also not the best speed roll that you can get. But uh, yeah, who cares about the flat stats on the mod when it already rolled four upgrades and speed? Here's the next one to take a look at and practice if you'd like. This is a crit chance set. Two defensive substats on it. Again, it has 13 speed, but this is at gold already, so it, it, it doesn't have a chance to develop more speed beyond this until we 6-dot it. So should we 6-dot this mod? It's okay for now. We can definitely put it on a character. It's a crit chance set. It does have offense. It does have pretty good speed. But if we're looking to slice, this mod may or may not be picked for slicing because we may have other mods with higher potential stats that point more in the direction that we want. So this could be a six dot mod if it's the best potential mod that we have for slicing. Okay, so I wouldn't say automatically just slice it. When it's your best mod for slicing, then you could work on it. Here's the next mod. Let's take a look at this. I apologize for these mods having the first line cut off. There's a little glitch in the game right now where it kind of overlaps the, the secondary stat header with the, with the stats. There's not much I can do about that. What would you do with this one? It's a crit damage set with a crit damage main stat, so that matches up perfectly. It's got two defensive substats, which aren't that desirable. But it's already a gold mod. And it has 5 speed. So this is something that you could put at level 15, put on a character. It's fine for now. It may be something that we sell off later. But as you can see, this mod is not locked for me. And uh, I can use it, but I don't plan to keep it forever. Someday it will be replaced with better mods. Here's the next one we can take a look at. This is a tenacity set. All four of the substats are all percent stats, which we like. It does have tenacity, but we only got one roll in tenacity. There's no speed. This mod should be sold. It's not high tenacity. It's not high speed. It's got percent stats. 
in the early game, this is the kind of this is a kind of mod that you would want to keep in the early game. It, it's it's decent. It does something for you, but uh, you're going to quickly replace that with something better and sell it off. Here's the next one to take a look at. What would you guys do with this mod? It's an offense set. It has three offensive substats with flat offense, speed, and crit chance. It does have tenacity, which is kind of a throwaway stat. But we have already said that as long as it has three good stats, we're interested. This kind of mod, I would slice once. I would look for the speed or the crit chance. If it hits speed, I would definitely continue. If it hit crit chance, I might hit it one more time at purple and see how it goes. If you were to get four rolls in crit chance, for example, you'd still be pretty happy with this mod. It would be less speed, but it would be uh, much more crit chance. Those are the kinds of decisions you can make, but it has pretty good potential. Now, if I sliced it once to purple and it hits tenacity, then almost for sure I'm going to unlock the mod. It'll be okay for now, and I won't continue slicing it. What would you do with this one? It's a defense set. The crit chance on the main stat doesn't really match a defensive set. It has speed and 3% stats, but it's all over the place. It's got potency, tenacity, protection, crit chance, speed. Where's this mod going? When you try to pick a mod for a character, if you were picking this for a defensive character, it's got a couple defensive stats, but then crit chance on the main stat. If you use the crit chance on an offensive character, it's not really adding much beyond the crit chance. So for me, this mod's confused. It's going all different directions. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to use that one. We want to probably sell that off. Here we've got a potency cross. So it's a potency set with a potency main stat. And remember, it, it's got three offense stats and no speed. It's okay for now. We don't want to sell this. It's a potency cross with a potency main stat. Those match up very nicely. And if we really want a character to have lots of potency, we might use this again at some point later. We may replace it with a much better mod. But starting out, this could definitely be used for something. And it's an offensive mod with offense, crit chance, and flat offense. Definitely worth keeping. Probably not worth slicing. Probably can find a better mod with better potential. This one's a speed set, three flat stats, which are not desirable, but it has two hits in speed. So what would we do with this? Well, if we're just trying to develop speed mods with a speed set, I might invest in one slice. Take it to level 15, slice it. If it hits speed, keep going. If it doesn't hit speed, we'll sell it immediately. Because the other substats are low potential. We don't want to be wasting money on this mod. But speed overrides everything. As long as we keep rolling speed, it's worth the investment. Here's a health mod for you to look at. It's a health set with a health main stat, which is good. It's got four speed on it. It's got three good stats. The flat stat in this case is health, so it's also adding health to a mod that's health percent with a health main stat or health uh, set. So this is a good mod. We can lock it. We can slice it. We're really looking for that speed. If the speed hits, it will keep us interested. Potentially, if the protection hits, we might stay interested. It doesn't have to be a super fast mod, but if we could get one more hit in speed, it's worth 
continuing to tickle up this mod because it really is it's a good defensive mod it's got health on it it's got that offense like i said we i always appreciate any offense even if it's on a defensive mod so that one looks good to me i would i would invest in it slice it see what we get so that brings us to the end. Here's the boss of the Techno Union sitting in front of his uh, board with all the goodies that he's able to buy because of the Techno Union build that gets him all this currency in the shops. Remember, everybody, farm your mods. That's going to wrap up Holocron number three in Darth Lokwitter's Mod Mastery series. I've got several other videos on my channel of myself going through my own mod inventory, applying this method, working on my mods, trying to get better stuff. You can see my decision making as I develop the stats, sell off the mods, slice the mods, uh, whatever it is that I'm doing on that particular um, day. I also have a special video for you all in trying to apply this and help people, uh, one of my Patreon subscribers named Fellhammer asked for my help on mods. I knew that I was going to be working on this mod series video. So I actually invited him to uh, work with me. And together we went through uh, his mod inventory and we apply this method over and over again to his mods. So I'm going to put that up as an appendix to this holocron where you can watch us working together. Uh, we had some good laughs. We worked on a lot of mods. We got some killer mods in his inventory during the session. I think he learned a lot. I think uh, it, other people could potentially learn a lot from watching it. So we're going to put that video out separately. Watch for that here in the near future. And, uh, you know, Fellhammer can show you how he works on mods. And uh, hopefully we can all learn something together from that. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hit the like button on the way out if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel to watch more videos like this in the future. Join us over on Discord. The link is in the description for the video down below. Hope to see you over there. We've got a great community that you can be part of. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you in the next Holocron.